Hello my fellow nerds, it's Emily, in case you didn't already know that. Um, and today I have a very exciting video. Over the past couple days, a lot of talk has been going around about the new Star Wars The Acolyte series. So I am going to react to the trailer, talk about some of the character releases, and just kind of give you a rundown of what's been going on in Star Wars in the past week. So let's get into it. Close your eyes. Your eyes can deceive you. We must not trust them. Okay, just to start off, I love seeing the Jedi Temple. I, I, I think it was such an underexplored area in the prequels, and I'm just so excited to be back there. Like, even in Clone Wars, like, we didn't see the Jedi Temple as much as I wanted, so... Um, one of the things that I love about the High Republic and that <laughs> I actually, I wrote a pilot because I'm a writer and I wrote a pilot, um, for a High Republic series and one of the things that I had in it was like an entire introduction to what the Jedi Order looks like and it's like what, what greater way to see that than how Jedi interact with each other and with the Force and with all their things at the temple. So I just love, I love the Jedi Temple. I think it's so gorgeous and I love what a statement it is, so. Tell me what comes into your mind. What comes into your Light. mind? Balance. I see fire. Someone is killing Jedi. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'm so excited to see like Padawan and Jedi Masters of different like like I don't know like there's just something about like the alienness of Star Wars. I'm so excited to see these like alien characters being I don't know like <laughs> Wookie Jedi. I mean like we've had a couple Wookie Jedi over the years. We've had Gungi. Gunji in the Clone Wars. We've had Buryaga and um oh my gosh what's the other Wookiee Jedi in High Republic? There's Buryaga, Arkoff. Arkoff is the other one. Um so Wookiee Jedi isn't like a new concept to Star Wars but it's exciting to see in live action. What happened? I sensed the darkness. I want to know what that location is. I want to know what that is because I want to. Know. I just want to know. I can't remember if I'm making this up, like if I'm lying about this or not, but I remember seeing something about like she was his apprentice. Am I making that up? Maybe. <laughs> okay, okay. I have to stop, like pausing right away but for Nestor Rowe making her live action debut as a 117 year old Jedi Master is actually one of the most exciting things about this show in my opinion because it takes place a hundred years after the events of the High Republic it's like kind of hard to have like Avar Chris or or Elzar Man or those kind of characters in the series especially because we don't know um where they end up at the end of Star Wars The High Republic Phase 3 because it's not out yet but knowing that Vern has plot armor, Vern's gonna survive the series! Vern's gonna survive the High Republic, and I'm so happy that she has plot armor. Um, Manny Jacinto, of course, I'm very excited for his character. I think his is the only non-Jedi or non-Force user character that we've been introduced to so far um, in this kind of show, so I'm excited to see where that goes as well. <laughs> isn't about good or bad. Oh. I don't know if the witches are force users. I don't know if these like witches are force users, but I know they're witches. They were announced to be witches. This is about power. And who is allowed to use it? What is that? Oh, 
Oh, that's so much. I love that trailer so much. I love this era of Star, like the pre prequels. I know. Oh. The cavalry has arrived. Um. Great. Thank you, Dee Bradley Baker, doing clone voices for five and a half minutes. I'm so excited for this series. I'm so excited for all of the different characters that we're gonna get introduced to. I'm curious about where it would go, seeing, like, if there would be movies in this, like, a hundred years before, or if this is just, like, a one-time standalone thing, or even if Skeleton Crew is gonna be around this, this age as well. Like, uh, it's very, very unclear where Star Wars is going from here. I think... I think they're in a phase of throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks for fans because they already have such a huge following for the High Republic era. I think they're trying to put things in between to see if it's going to stick before they commit to doing a larger project for um, that era. Or talk about some of the characters. So we see uh, in the beginning Jedi Master Soul and he's teaching a group of younglings. I think Oh, I feel like I'm lying about this, but I feel like May, who's played by Amanda Stenberg, I feel like she was his apprentice, and I feel like she's going rogue, because on the Star Wars website, it says that she's an assassin, but she's obviously the one with the red lightsaber. Is she obviously the one with the red lightsaber? Hang on, let's... <laughs> I guess we don't actually see the face of the person who has the red lightsaber and in her black series figure she also doesn't have a lightsaber she's just an assassin so i wonder i wonder if she is either a the sith character because the whole series is about introducing the downfall of the jedi and um, how the Sith rose to power under the Jedi's nose because the Jedi didn't believe that the Sith were like a problem again until one of them literally killed Qui-Gon in the Phantom Menace. So it'll be really interesting how they balance that a hundred years ago. Obviously there is a Sith user in their midst or that they have to deal with. So I wonder if they think that it's like, oh, this is a one-time thing or if this is like a recur- this is- I don't know. It's really interesting to me the idea of like the Jedi kind of not forgetting about things, but forgetting about things. The vendettas I have against Yoda is that in the High Republic Phase 2, which, mind you, I haven't finished yet, so maybe there's, like, a good reason, but there's this, um, creature, spoilers for the High Republic, um, and it's called the Nameless Terror, and it's, like, kind of an issue in Phase 2, and then it comes back at the end of Phase 1, and it's kind of an issue again, and I'm like, okay, so it's like a hundred, there's like a hundred years difference between those two phases. But you know who's been there for the hundred years? Yoda. You know who probably knew about the Nameless Terror the first time it came around? Yoda. I, again, this is just like, I have a vendetta against Yoda because he's so old. And like, there's so many things that like, probably could have fixed, like Anakin and Darth Vader, like that whole thing. Like, I know he was clouded by the Sith, but maybe this is going to be the kind of band-aid on why Yoda didn't sense a Sith in their midst for however long Palpatine was uh, in power before it all happened. I'm so excited again to see where this goes. I'm excited for Vernestra. I love Vernestra. She is one of my favorite characters in the High Republic um, universe because she's like this 16 slash 17 year old who is one of the youngest Jedi Knights ever knighted at her age. So it's going to be really interesting to see how she is a hundred years later. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I, I, I'm not familiar with Miri Allen age rates, but I feel like she looks really good for 117. <laughs> um, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, there's so much here. I mean, I could go on for hours about like every single little thing. Kelnaka is the name of the new... Um, Wookiee Jedi. Apparently he's a loner, according to the Star Wars database, which is really exciting. Yord and Jackie. I am most excited for these two because, again, I love the Padawan master dynamic in the Star Wars universe. I think, um, for example, Stellan and Vern, that was something in the High Republic that I wish we had gotten to see more of because I would have loved to see not only their relationship play out, but also how Stellan's besties Avar and Elzar would react to Stellan having this like little by the books like 
epic apprentice with him at all times. Um, again, I wrote a pilot for a series about this. Um, it says Yord, um, it says he is a rule follower, totally by the books, blah, blah, blah. And Jackie, um, also seems to be, like, quite- that she projects calm and maturity for her age. Um, I'm just editing this, and I'm seeing now that Jackie is the apprentice to Soul, and not Yord. So I'm sorry for lying to you for the past, like, two minutes, <laughs> but at least you know now. What? I thought it was weird because as I was listening to myself say that they have very similar personalities, I was like, the Jedi Council would never put two compatible people together. Because it's the Vern and Stellan master of Padawan dynamic that we never got to see. Um, except for like in one comic. There's a one, one shoot comic and it's when they meet and that's it. And there's no other. Anyway. And then the witches. I'm really excited about this group. They look very, um, Night Sister esque. So I don't know. I don't know how this group fits into the universe. So Mother Nisa, again, very Night Sisterly group looking. In the High Republic Phase 2, there is a group called the group of the Path of the Open Hand. And they're kind of like a force cult who believes that if someone uses the force, they abuse the force, and it takes away from someone else in the galaxy. Um, one of the things I love about Phase 2 is that they really explore more of the religious sects that believe in the Force and its different interpretations throughout different groups. Um, oh, and then in Phase 1 slash 3, there's the Nihil, which I believe are coalesced somehow with the group of the Path of the Open Hand. Um, I don't know if this is some sort of offshoot of that. It would be really interesting if it was. There's definitely some color schemes, symbolism that's going on that definitely could uh, be a, a a witchy force group like the Night Sisters. Um, but again, we don't have that much information about Mother Anissa and her coven of witches, so that's just something we're gonna have to look forward to, I think. Jedi Master Indara. All we see about Indara is that she's after May, the assassin. Um, I don't know. It's hard to look at a character who's just like a woman in a cloak. She's there. <laughs> anyway, this is kind of like an introduction to a new series of stories set in this hundred year before verse uh, in terms of pre Skywalker saga, or if they're going to go back even further and this is some sort of precursor to the Skywalker saga and then they're going to go to the High Republic and that's going to be a completely separate thing. Um, I think... What's interesting is that they gave Vernestra plot armor because uh, phase three of the High Republic series, like as far as like books, comics, YA novels, middle grade novels go, it isn't done yet. Like it isn't going to be done until like the end of this year or the beginning of next year. So I think it's really interesting that they're choosing to bring this series out before the culmination of the High Republic because it's going to spoil a lot of the like I don't know I, it is a hundred years of difference but again Vernestra is there so it, it would be very easy for her to be like oh yeah you know when Avar died in a fiery explosion saving Elzar's life and you're like what do you mean and a El Avar is gonna die in a fiery explosion um I do hope I don't know I have mixed hopes like I'm fine if again I really want to play Avar Chris in live action um I think I'm a good age to be cast as a young Avar Chris because she's in her early 30s so I think by the time Star Wars actually got around to that it would be like perfect um but I I think there's a lot of characters that they almost can't even reference in this series because they if they're already keeping Vernestra as like she has plot armor she survives the High Republic series um then there's a lot of characters that they also could have done that with that like theoretically could have survived like Buryaga could have survived I don't know how old I don't know I don't know how old Mary Allen's typically age for but um Wookiees tend to live pretty long lifetimes so I definitely think it would be totally fair if Buryaga was still like kicking around because he was a young Jedi um definitely definitely some spoiler territory for High Republic but I I, I hope that they kind of avoid a lot of talk about that so that they can come back to it and not have to pull a Dave Filoni with General Grievous and Anakin not meeting during the whole Clone Wars because of one offhanded comment made um in episode three um yeah there's been some really cool um action figure character releases pre the series that have been released or have been shown so I think that's really cool
I definitely want the Jeki one because again I love a good non-human Jedi Padawan character as seen by Ahsoka Vernestra. Thank you so much for checking out my video. I hope you know a little bit more about what the Acolyte is gonna bring. And um, yeah, drop a like, a comment, a subscribe, all those fun things, and I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs>